Hi everyone, uh, this is Algebra 2, um, Unit 6, we're talking about quadratic functions, and uh, this is Lesson 6-4, uh, we're talking about graphing um, quadratic functions, specifically we're talking about the parts of a quadratic graph, okay? uh, so our goal is to understand how the various numbers in the equations uh, relate to the features of a, of a parabola. So we want to be able to look at the equations and then uh, be able to tell information about that parabola based off of the equation. And then um, our central question is, how does the axis of symmetry relate to the vertex? So we'll talk about what the axis of symmetry is here in just a minute. So um, there's a lot on this uh, slide here, but, um, but these are the generally the parts of a parabola that we're going to be concerned with. So a parabola always has this U-shape um, sort of a thing here, right? Sometimes it can open up, sometimes it can open down. Um, sometimes uh, it will sit, you know, totally above the x-axis or totally below the x-axis, um, depending on, you know, the equation. Um, but every parabola will have a vertex. Okay. The vertex is where it changes direction, where it changes from going down um, to going up, or if it's opening down, from going up to going down. And so it's that change in direction is where that vertex happens. Um, one feature of parabolas is um, parabolas are symmetrical, and they're symmetrical about a line, a vertical line that goes through the vertex. So we call that line the axis of symmetry, or sometimes it's referred to as the line of symmetry. Um, so that line of symmetry, that axis of symmetry, goes right through the vertex. Okay? And that's an important feature because um, we'll be able to find that axis of symmetry, calculate it, and then that axis of symmetry will tell us the x-coordinate, right? the x-coordinate of our vertex. Okay. Parabola can have um, up to two x-intercepts. Sometimes it has zero x-intercepts. Sometimes it has only one x-intercept. Um, and sometimes it can have two. It can never have more than two uh, x-intercepts. That's just due to the nature of the shape. Okay, It goes down and then it comes up. And since it only changes direction once, it can only cross that x-axis a maximum of two times. So we have x-intercepts um, sometimes. Uh, so we want to be able to tell uh, if a parabola has an x-intercept and if it does have an x-intercept um, or x-intercepts, right, how to find those. And then the last thing we're going to be looking at is the y-intercept. So every parabola will cross the y-axis at some point, um, regardless of where it's located or how it's shaped. Um, and the reason is, is because it always continues on um, forever right it, it goes on to infinity on the left hand side and on the right hand side and so eventually eventually every parabola will cross the y-axis somewhere so there will always be a y-intercept now sometimes these points can be the same thing sometimes you'll have the y-intercept and the vertex will be the same Sometimes you'll have an x-intercept and the vertex be the same. Um, and that's fine. We'll, we'll look for those cases and, and uh, identify them when they come. Right. But these are the general um, sort of features that we're looking to, to find. Uh, the axis of symmetry is a pretty straightforward thing to find. The y-intercept is a pretty straightforward thing to find. Um, once you know the axis of symmetry, you can find the vertex. So that's a fairly straightforward thing to find. Um, the thing that gets a little tricky is finding these x-intercepts. That's really what we're going to be focused on, is how to find those x-intercepts. So let's just kind of go through it here. We've got the axis of symmetry. Um, first, let's back up. We have this um, general equation for a parabola. This is called a standard form. It's just simply ax squared, where a is just some number, plus bx plus c. So we've got this quadratic part of the equation, we've got this linear part of the equation, and then we've got this constant part of the equation. So a, b, and c. And again, a, b, and c can be um, any real number. So um, to find the axis of symmetry, we can calculate that. Remember that this is a vertical line. Vertical line, 
and it passes through the vertex. Okay, so because it's a vertical line, it has this form x equals. Okay, so it's x equals. And what we do is we just take the opposite of the b value and divide it by two times the a value. And that will tell us what that axis of symmetry is. It tells us where on the x-axis, right, that, that axis of symmetry passes through. It also tells us the x-coordinate of our vertex, okay? We'll still have to calculate the y-coordinate um, of it, but it tells us where to look, right, on the x-axis um, to find that vertex. And, and we'll get into... Um, into more of like why this happens a little bit later, why it's negative b over 2a. Um, we can look at some different ways of, of proving that. Um, but for now, we're just going to take that definition that the x axis of symmetry is always x is equal to the opposite of the b value divided by 2 times the a value. Okay. So that axis of symmetry, again, tells us where that vertical line goes through. It tells us the x-coordinate of the vertex. So to find the y-coordinate of the vertex, we can just simply take this axis of symmetry number, right, this x value, and plug it into our equation and evaluate that. So we get whatever we get for this value, we can just put it into this equation, calculate it, and that will tell us the y value. Okay, so that's what this says here. Our vertex is located at the x-coordinate is negative b over 2a, our axis of symmetry. And the y-coordinate is that function when I plug in negative b over 2a. So it's whatever this value is when I plug in the x-coordinate into that function. Um, let's skip down to the y-intercept. So the definition of a y-intercept is where the x-coordinate is equal to 0. Okay, so wherever the x-coordinate is equal to 0, that's where that y-coordinate um, is going to be. That's where that y-intercept is going to be. So um, if I take a look at this function up here, and if I just say, well, uh, I'm going to evaluate that function where x is equal to 0, I plug in 0 into my equation, then I'm going to have a times 0, plus b times 0, plus c. Well, this, is be, this will be 0, this will be 0. So I have 0 plus 0 plus c. So I'll just end up with c. And so what that tells me is that my y-intercept, right, my y-intercept, it's always going to cross the y-axis at whatever the c value is. Okay, It's going to be at wherever the c value is. So... Um, if I look at this, my uh, y-intercept is going to be at the point um, 0, comma, c. That's where my y-intercept is always going to be. Okay, so we've got, we know how to calculate the axis of symmetry. We know how to use that axis of symmetry to find the vertex. We know how to look at this equation and figure out where the y-intercept is. Okay. And then the last thing we want to look at is where are the x-intercepts. Um, and so again, this is where uh, we're going to um, we're going to spend most of our time is finding out these x-intercepts. But the definition of an x-intercept is where the value of this equation is zero. Okay. So if I take this equation, ax squared plus bx plus c, and I set it equal to zero, and I can somehow figure out right, what the x values would be that would give me zero, those would be my x-intercepts. Now, one easy way to do that is I can just take any equation, right, any quadratic equation, and put it into a graphing calculator and just simply look up and see where those x-intercepts are. Right? So that's, the, that's the, the kind of the fallback position, right? Whenever we're not sure how to proceed, we can always just kind of fall back to that um, method and just simply graph it and look it up, okay? Um, sometimes that's not uh, an easy thing to do, depending on your graphing calculator and depending on the quadratic um, equation. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's a method that will always, always work. Okay, so let's look at some other methods of finding those x-intercepts. So, one of the things that we can use um, is what's called the zero product property. 
And, you know, we've just been spending a lot of time uh, practicing our factoring skills. So taking quadratic um, expressions and factoring them. Um, the reason we've been doing that is so that's, uh, that we can use those factors to help us find the x-intercepts. So the factored form will help us find the x-intercepts of a quadratic. And the reason is because of this thing called the zero product property. So the zero product property just simply says that if I have two things, two numbers, right? If I take two numbers and I multiply them together and the answer is zero, then that tells me that one of those two numbers has to be zero. Okay, if I multiply A times B and I get zero, then either A has to be has to be zero, or B has to be zero, or possibly both of them could be zero. Okay. And you know that's logically kind of works, right? We can think through, like, that's just the way that multiplication works. If I multiply something and I get zero, then one of those numbers has to be zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that and we're going to extend it to quadratics. So if I take a quadratic and I'm able to factor it and I get x plus p times x plus q is equal to zero, Okay, so I'm able to factor that quadratic and I set it equal to zero. Then it tells me that one of these two things that I multiplied together is zero. So here I have two things multiplied together. I have x plus p, right, that polynomial, and I have x plus q, another polynomial. I'm multiplying two polynomials together and I get zero for an answer. So what that tells me is that either the first polynomial has to be zero, so x plus p has to be equal to zero, or the second polynomial has to be equal to zero. x plus q has to be equal to zero. And so I can use those to figure out that, um, you know, if I solve these, then I could see that, well, x has to be um, negative p, or x has to be negative q. Okay, so I can take this polynomial here, x plus p, and solve it. So if I subtract p from both sides, that tells me that x has to be negative p. And the same thing here, if I solve this, then x has to be negative q, or the opposite of the q value. All right, so we're going to use this to help us um, to find uh, those solutions, right, or those zeros, um, those x-intercepts. So here's an example here. So if I look at this polynomial right here, um, I'm going to see, first of all, if I can factor it. I've got, you know, a quadratic, um, it's equal to zero, and I want to see if I can factor that. So if I were to factor this, I would say, well, I have to look at um, the numbers here and see, you know, I'm looking for the values of uh, the factors of 15, right? Two numbers that multiply to give me 15, but that also combine or add up to give me positive 8. And so if I think about the factors of 15, I've got 1 and 15. Uh, 2 doesn't go into it, but 3 and 5 go into it. Okay. And so if I look at these factors, I can see, well, 3 and 5 are the factors that add up to give me 8, but multiply to give me 15. So I can see here that my factors are going to be um, x plus 3. Oops. and x uh, plus 5. And when those things multiply together, they get 0. Okay, because that's this original function here that is set equal to 0. So I can rewrite this, uh, this quadratic in factor form and say, well, this is the same as x plus 3 times x plus 5. And I can multiply those together and verify that. Our zero product property says that Either x plus 3 has to equal 0, or x plus 5 has to be 0. Oops. Or x uh, plus 5 has to be equal to 0. So that's the zero product property.
I have two things, right, that I'm multiplying together, x plus 3 times x plus 5. I'm multiplying those two polynomials together. So either the first polynomial has to be 0, or the second polynomial has to be 0. And what that tells me is that I can see that x has to be negative 3, or x has to be negative 5. So those are my two x-intercepts. So if I were to look at this polynomial, right, I can see that um, it crosses the x-axis at negative 3 and at negative 5. Okay. Anytime they say solve, right, if they say solve, they say find the zeros, they say um, find the x-intercepts, um, uh, that's what they're talking about. They're saying, well, that polynomial um, should be equal to zero and then figure out where it's going to cross the x-axis. Let's look at another example. Um, so here they're asking me to find a lot of information. They want me to find the vertex. They want me to find the x-intercept, the y-intercept um, of this equation. All right. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look and see can this be factored right can this be factored so i'm looking for the factors of 21 of negative 21 um, that add up to 4 to negative 4. so if i look at this i look at the factors of negative 21 i know that one has to be positive and one has to be negative um, and what is it seven and three and so i could see that if i look at a difference here right, 7 and 3, um, that will give me a negative 4, okay, so if I have a negative 7 and a positive 3, those multiply to give me 21 um, and add up to give me negative 4, so, um, so I can see that I can factor this, okay, so that's going to help me, um, so that's a good thing, so let's go through this whole process here, let's go through kind of one at a time, let's find our vertex, okay, so to find our vertex, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the x-coordinate of that vertex. And that x-coordinate of the vertex is on the um, axis of symmetry. So to find that x-coordinate, I'm going to use the axis of symmetry, which is negative b over 2a. And in this case, my a value is 1, and my b value is negative 4. So a is 1. And B is negative 4. Okay. Uh, so when I plug this in, I get X is equal to negative, and then B is negative 4. So those are going to cancel out and make a positive. And then 2 times A value, which is 1. So here I would get 4 over 2, which is just 2. So that tells me, if I'm looking at my parabola, that my axis of symmetry is where x is equal to 2. And my vertex, the x-coordinate of my vertex, is where x is equal to 2. So to find my vertex, I know that the x-value is 2. And now I just simply have to find the y-value. So how do I find that y value? Well, I take 2, and I plug it into this equation. So to find my y value, that's going to be my function when I plug in 2. And so that's going to be 2 squared, x squared, minus 4 times x, which is 2, minus 21. And so I get uh, 4 minus 8. It's an 8, 4, 8, minus 21. And so, uh, what is that? That's negative 5 uh, minus 21. That's going to be negative 26. I'm sorry, negative 25. 8, eight minus, uh, 4 minus 8 is negative 4, plus negative 21 is negative 25. Okay, so there's my y value. So my y value is negative 25. So there's my vertex. Vertex lies at the coordinate 2, negative 25. 
Now, to find the x-intercepts, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation. And I'm going to set it equal to 0. That's the definition of an x-intercept, is where that y value, that function, is equal to 0. So we already looked. We know we can factor this. So this factors out to be uh, x minus 7 and x plus 4, sorry, x plus 3. And the zero product property tells me that, well, if I multiply these two polynomials together and get a zero, then either x minus 7 has to be zero, or x plus 3 has to be zero. Which means that x has to be positive 7, or x has to be negative 3. So those are my x-intercepts. And sometimes they're looking for the x-value, sometimes they're looking for the points. Okay, so remember that right, this, this represents the point 7, 0. And that this represents the point negative 3, 0. This one's kind of freaking out on me. Okay, but we're almost done. All right, so we've got um, the vertex. We've got the vertex. We've got the x-intercept. And then the last thing we need to find is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is the easiest one to find. It's just simply that c value, right? It's where x is equal to 0, and it becomes the c value. So my y-intercept is simply going to be, screen's really freaking out now, is going to be equal to, zero let's go ahead and just type this out uh, so my y-intercept is going to be the point um, where x is zero and the y is negative 20. so there's my y-intercept and again, sometimes they'll ask for the y value of that. Sometimes they'll ask for it as a point. Okay, so here I've got my three things. I've got my vertex is at 2, negative 25. My x-intercepts are at 7, 0, and negative 3, 0. And my y-intercept is at 0, 21. Sorry, negative 20. Okay, here's another example. Um, so here I've got... Uh, a little more complex um, equation here. So I've got 3x squared uh, minus 17x minus 28. Okay, so um, so they're asking for the same thing. They're asking for the vertex. They're asking for the x-intercepts, and they're asking for the y-intercept. So let's start with the easy one. We know the y-intercept is at the point where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to negative 28. So that one we can tell just by looking at the equation. To find the axis of symmetry, right? To find the axis of symmetry, um, I can plug in negative b over 2a. Negative b over 2a. And I can see if I can factor, uh, if I can uh, calculate that value. Um, if I go to the x-intercepts, okay, and I try to factor this, well, um, you know, factoring this is, is not necessarily impossible, right? Like, we could do it, but it may take us a little while to go through that process. So, um, so what I'm going to suggest is that, well, when we have a case like this where, you know, we're not quite sure maybe how that factors out, um, or even if it factors, uh, what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going um, to go and use a graphing calculator. So I'm just going to use Desmos. And so I'll fire up my graphing calculator here. And so I'll just go ahead and put in that function. So I've got f of x um, is equal to 3x squared 
minus 17x minus 28. And then I can look and see where those values are. And so if I look at my vertex right all the way down here, I can see that my vertex is at the point 2, uh, 0.83, and negative 52.083. All right. So um, if I want, needed to turn those into fractions, I could I could do that, right? Um, I th think uh, 083. That would be 833 over 1,000. I'm not sure what that, what is, what that is as a fraction, um, but I could, I could um, put it on a calculator, turn that into a fraction and see, see what that is. But, uh, but I can see that there's my vertex. So my axis of symmetry is where X is equal to 2.833, and the vertex is here at 2.833 negative 52.083. And then if I scroll back up here and I look at my x-intercepts, x-intercepts, I can see that those x-intercepts, so one of them is at negative 1.333, so negative one and one third, or negative four thirds, and at seven, zero. Okay, so at seven, zero. And so, that tells me, you know, where those um, x-intercepts are. The fact that this is a whole number here, 7, and that this works out to be an even fraction, negative um, 4 thirds, uh, that tells me that, um, that I can probably factor that polynomial. But for now, we're just interested in um, making that connection, right? Here's the parabola, and then where are those features, and what, are the, what do they look like, all right? Okay, so if we wanted to, um, we wanted to, oops, to find, uh, let's see here. Oh, my software crashed. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so if I, if I wanted to find that, uh, that parabola, right? I can, or that axis of symmetry, I could calculate that. I could say where x is equal to um, negative b, so that's going to be positive 17 over um, 6. And so that's 2.883. And I could see that axis of symmetry right there. Okay, so 17 over 6. And then to calculate the y value, I would plug 17 over 6 back into this equation, and I would get that. So that does work out to be a fraction. Um, and if I wanted to, to look up that value, I could turn this into a table of values, and I could put in um, 17 over 6, and it would tell me that the y value is negative 52.033, or negative... Um, negative 52 and one-sixth. One-sixth. Okay. All right. So, um, so you kind of get an idea of the kind of problems that you're going to be looking at um, in, this, uh, in this chapter um, or in this unit. Uh, so, um, take a look at the at the problems that we have there, and um, and let me know if you have any questions. All right.